Today's scripture passage is Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. Hear this good word. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for forty days, being te tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. So today is the first Sunday of Advent. I mean, today is the first Sunday of Lent. And the Lenten season is the season of 40 days to prepare us for Easter. And it's during this time of Lent that, that we, we spend time contemplating and, and, and exploring what's going on in our lives and what areas in our lives do we need to, to create change. Now, what I want to do is just call attention to the scripture passage, and I just want to, to call attention to the series of events. Jesus is baptized. He comes out of the water. The heavens are opened up. God speaks to him and says, you are my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. And then it says that he was sent into the wilderness by the Spirit. Now, the word sent in this passage in the Greek more literally means cast out. It's a much more um, powerful term than just sent. No, he was cast out into the wilderness. So here you go. You have this incredible experience and the heavens opened up to you and the next thing you know, the spirit that talked about how beautiful and lovely and how pleased it is, cast you out into the wilderness for a wilderness experience. Now Mark does not give us the details that Matthew and Luke do. In fact, the Gospel of Mark, as you will experience it this year, is the, sh is the shorter version of the Gospels. And with Mark, there's a consistent theme of something happening immediately, or it's about to take place right now. During the, the season of Advent, we, we spent a lot of time on the baptism of Jesus. And so I'm not going to do that here today, but we will we'll draw upon what we've learned previously. But today I want to, to, to focus more on the wilderness and also the repent and believe. So, it seems to me that we should be able to relate all too well with Jesus' experience of having that glorious moment when the heavens open up than to be cast out into the wilderness and to experience hardship, difficulty, right? I, I believe COVID has done that to every human being on this planet right? Life is going beautifully. Life is going well. Oh, isn't, aren't things good? And then within a split second, everything turns. Everything changes. We can relate to that. I know that, that, that for, for, for my beloved, a job she sought for two years, she finally got. And before she could finish orientation, COVID hit, she got COVID, and furloughs and layoffs started immediately. She never even got a chance to really do that, which she had been seeking. Boom, like that in a heartbeat. It all changed. And I know that's so true for many of you over the course of this last year. So many things have changed. But it seems to me also that COVID is not only a, our wilderness experience, but is the whole world's wilderness experience. What is going to emerge after COVID, Right? And it seems to me that also, what are we learning? What are we changing? I, I, I believe, for many of us, we've reprioritized what is most important in our lives. And also, I bet that all over the world, none of us will, will take advantage of or not totally appreciate what it means to be able to be with each other and to be connected. Maybe 
this wilderness is going to help humanity to appreciate more what it's like to see each other and to be with each other. We'll see. So the wilderness experience is about discovering who we are and what we are to become. And I'm very, very curious that as COVID is under control over the whole world and we start to emerge from this wilderness, who will we be as humanity and what as humanity will we become? I'm going to be curious to see what that's all about, what that's, what that's going to be like. So Jesus, just like the rest of us, had to experience the harsh and the unpleasant before he could go into doing what he was going to do. He had that harsh, was it, that, that kind of the emotional whiplash, right? Who, God is speaking to me how glorious, and then next thing you know, you're being tempted. Now, the gospel says that he was in the wilderness and he was being tempted by Satan. I want to once again just share with you the context of that word Satan. Uh, if you come from an evangelical background, you've probably heard it pronounced Satan, but that's not. It, actually, the correct pronunciation is Satan. And what it means in its most literal sense is a stumbling block. There's another story in the Gospels where Jesus is at Caesarea Philippi. And while he is there with all of the, the, the pantheon of gods all around them from the Roman uh, system, he asks his disciples, who do people say I am? And they say Elijah, some say Moses, some say the prophet. And then he says, but who do you say I am? And Peter says, oh, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. Oh, Peter, he was so proud of Peter. Peter got it right. And Peter, this did not come from flesh and blood, but this rather came from that spirit that lives and dwells in you. And now this is what must happen to me. And Jesus then talked about how he was going to be arrested and how he was going to be crucified. And on the third day, he would rise again. And Peter got in his face and wagged his fingers. And said, I will not allow this to happen. This is not going to happen. And it's at that moment that Peter then got in his face just as sternly and says, get behind me, Satan. Because Peter at that moment had become a what? A stumbling block. And my friends, that is what the wilderness experience is for. While we are in our wilderness and we're not distracted by so many things, it's a time of contemplation. It's a time of looking inwardly to see what are our stumbling blocks. Jesus goes from being baptized, which the Greek word means to be immersed, into the wilderness. So what are we immersed in? What are the stumbling blocks that keep us from fulfilling our fullest potential? What are the stumbling blocks in the things that we do, the things that we say, the things that we think? What are the stumbling blocks of self-sabotaging behavior? What are those things in our lives that we must deal with? And that's what the wilderness experience is for. So what were Jesus' stumbling blocks? Well, the Gospel of Mark doesn't give us a list, but we know from the other ones it was turning bread, or stones into bread, jumping off the pinnacle of the temple, and ruling the world. Why would they be stumbling blocks? Well, in Israel, there are so many rocks there that there, you would never run out. And think about it. If you could turn st stones into bread, you could feed a lot of people, um, you could probably make a handsome profit because, well, you wouldn't need to buy the flour and the yeast and have the ovens and do the baking and the labor. You could pff, turn bread. You know? And while you're feeding people at a, at a low cost, you could justify the incredible profit that you're making, right? That sounds like good business. The, the other one is jumping off the pinnacle of the temple, 150 feet, because it said that the Son of Man would, if he were to, to fall, the angels would collect him and catch him before he, he hit the ground so he would not even stub his toe. But why test fate? Typically, gravity works like this. You jump off, you fall down very quickly and very, very hard. But just think, if you could pull off a stunt like that, whew, that would make you very popular, wouldn't it? And then the last one is ruling the world. So if you were not able to get a following of people because you could feed them cheaply, turning stones into bread, or that you could mesmerize them by doing great stunt acts, then maybe you just could rule over them. 
and rule all the kingdoms of the world. And one of the things that I've noticed as I've looked at those stumbling blocks for Jesus, they all center around ego. They're all centered around his ego mind rather than his spirit mind. So Jesus had to go through his wilderness to figure out who he was and what his purpose was with clarity. Because it's in the clarity that we have the power. If we know precisely who we are, if we know exactly what it is we need to do, then that's our authority, that's our power. And no matter what comes up against us, we're not going to fall away from that direction and from that source. Another thing that I want to just point out here too is that Jesus eventually emerged from the wilderness. He was not meant to stay there. And after he left the wilderness, he did have clarity and he did have purpose in this world, and then he started his ministry. He knew who he was, and he knew what he was to accomplish. We are not meant to stay in the wilderness. Now, I have to admit to you, right now, in the COVID wilderness that we find ourselves in, it seems like it's never going to go away. I know eventually it will, but right now, it still seems like it is never going to go away. For those of us who are waiting for the vaccinations, maybe April... Hopefully, we'll see, but I don't know about you, with COVID around, April sounds like a long time away. But the idea of the wilderness experience is not to lose hope, but it's to be patient because eventually we will get to the other side. And when Jesus did, he started proclaiming good news. The kingdom of God is at hand. Now, here's another little piece in the passage that I found interesting that I've usually gloss over, but this week, it seemed to really stand out to me, so I, I want to bring it to your attention now. It starts out, John was put into prison. And then right after that, Jesus went out proclaiming the good news. I see something symbolic and metaphorical here. And after hearing uh, Dr. Uh, Crossan lecture on this idea of the kingdom of God is at hand. Uh, I, I, can see, I can see the metaphor here more, more clearly. John the Baptist was the old school idea about the kingdom of God. He, he was more the apocalyptic voice, and I've talked to you about that before in the past. Uh, the apocalyptic is, the, the idea is that humanity is in a state that humanity cannot cure, so God must intervene directly. And the old school prophecy about the kingdom of God is that God would literally intervene in time and space and God would find a place and place God's kingdom in that spot. And I'll never forget Dr. Cross in the way that he was just kind of humanizing the story. When Robert John the Baptist is, is proclaiming the kingdom of God is going to be hit right now, so get, get, your, get your stuff together, get your life right, because the kingdom of God is going to plop down here any moment. And the people say, yeah, but didn't you say that last year? And, you know, and I've, I've heard other, pro you know, 20 years ago, I heard a prophet saying something very, you know, oh, it's at hand, get yourselves together, you know, oh, you know, God's coming and, you know, get busy. And it didn't happen. Oh, but this time, this, this time it is, this time it is. And, well, it didn't. And what I see as a kind of a, a, a symbolism here is that that type of thinking had to be put into prison. Because that is not how the divine works. God is not going to plop God's kingdom as a physical place upon this planet. And everybody has to travel to that place to see God. It's not going to work that way. It never has, nor will it ever. Jesus, on the other hand, coming from his wilderness experience, had clarity about that. When he says, the time is now, the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus was not talking about God was going to establish a literal kingdom on earth where God would sit upon a throne, but rather Jesus was saying, the kingdom of God is at hand because it's right here in the heart and the soul of every human being. And that's what it is. That's the difference in the message. It's not something we have to wait on to be established somewhere on the planet, but rather the reality of the kingdom and the throne and the love of God is in the heart and soul of every human being. You don't have to invite it in. It's already there. You don't have to become a good person for it to arrive because it's already there. 
You don't have to speak a certain language, have a certain color of skin, or to have a particular kind of religion. It's already there. The kingdom of God is in the heart and the soul of every human being on this planet. And that is the good news. That is the good news. And Jesus says, repent and believe. If you will just believe and hold on to that reality that God already loves you, that God's already in you, it's just up to us to become more conscious of it and to live into that love and then live into that reality. Believe it, and eventually you'll start finding your way and your journey to become more and more connected intimately with this reality, the divine lives in us all. Jesus says, the time is now. I've shared with you in the past. I'll share it with you again. Two Greek words for time. Chronos, chronological time, linear, beginning, middle, and end. Kairos is eternal time. And its most literal translation, it's a window of opportunity now. So when Jesus says the time has come, he wasn't talking about, you know, a certain time of day and it's a certain time of year. He was talking about a window of opportunity has opened for you right now. And you must enter it now. Enter it now. You don't need to stop and think about it. Or maybe you're too busy right now because that window will close and another opportunity, we have no idea when it will appear. So, Kairos, the time is now. The window of opportunity has happened now. And I am sharing with you that the window of opportunity for you to know who you are, to deal with your stumbling blocks, to, be, to discover what you are immersed in. And if it's healthy and if it's, if, and if it's uh, healing, then stay there. But if it's destructive and it's toxic, find a way to let it go. That's what repent is. Find a way to repent. Find a way to do an about face from that which causes you to stumble. And that's what our wilderness experience is about. Once we've come through the wilderness, the time is now to believe, to repent, and to start that intimate connection with the divine. So what is the work that you need to do so you can emerge from the wilderness with clarity and purpose? What are the voices around you and in your mind telling you about who you are and what you're to do? I'm going to conclude today's message with a quote from Henry Nouwen. And this quote comes from Bread of Journey, a day book of wisdom and faith. Henry Nouwen wrote, Many voices ask for our attention. There is a voice that says, prove that you are a good person. Another voice says, you'd better be ashamed of yourself. There's also that voice that says, nobody really cares about you. And one that says, be sure to become successful, and popular, and powerful. But underneath all of these often very noisy voices is a still small voice that says, you are my beloved. My favor rests on you. That's the voice we need most of all to hear. To hear that voice, however, requires special effort. It requires solitude. We, we've talked about that. It requires silence. We've talked about that too. It requires a strong determination to do what? To listen. That's what prayer is. It is listening to the voice that calls us my beloved. So my friends, the good news for you is this. Wherever you find yourself immersed in, baptized in, whatever the stumbling blocks in your life are, whatever is, is coming out, opening the heavens to reveal God's love for you, or whether you're being cast out by God into the wilderness, wherever you find yourself today, know that you are God's beloved. You're God's beloved. And trust in that as you learn how to repent, believe, discover who you are, 
and have clarity in your purpose. Thus ends the lesson. Amen.